When I moved to Germany in 2012, I actually decided to use the healthcare system that was provided to me as a resident in Germany. This might sound so trivial, but this is not common practice in my hometown or country of Guatemala. Little did I know what I was about to discover. Here's a list of the checkups I did, which were covered by my public health insurance. So first I went to the dentist. Which is covered every year, a preventative checkup. Yeah, <laughs> then I went to the skin doctor. Which is covered every two years. And the skin doctor is important to check if any of the, um, how do you call these, uh, moles, freckles? Freckles. Freckles are, could be dangerous and then you get well, treatment for it. Moles than freckles. Yeah, more moles than freckles. Then I went to get a general checkup. Which is actually only included in the public health insurance once between the age of 30, 18 and 35. Unless, of course, you have a reason for um, more analysis. And then every three years after the age of 35. Yes, and this general checkup includes, but is not limited to, uh, reviewing your family history, medical history, having a blood test, urine sample, uh, vaccination status. Physical analysis. Physical analysis yeah. and stuff like that. And I also went to the gynecologist. Which is included also once a year. Everything came back fine, except for the blood test. I had a very low iron, but by very low, I mean like almost like... Anemic. No iron, which is crazy because I had lived all my life feeling so good. I don't know. <laughs> it was really weird. <laughs> well, so good? Yeah, with low iron, right? Yeah, how good could it be, right? <laughs> right. So the doctor explained that this is completely normal in women and that I should just proceed to take iron pills. So I got the recepte, recepte, so or the um, prescription. There you go. <laughs> the prescription, and I went to the apothecas, to the pharmacy, to get my to buy my iron pills for five euros. Another benefit of being uh, publicly health insured. Um, and I started taking iron. I took iron for three months the first time. Went to get my blood analysis, still low. Keep on taking iron, okay. Then I went to another blood analysis, okay. Values are a little bit better. They're actually pretty good now, so stop taking iron. Then the next year, I'm like, okay, I want to control the iron again because let's just make sure it's remaining good, right? So I went again to have a blood test and hold and behold, no iron. And then the doctor, same thing, was completely normal. You have to keep on taking iron. Here's the receptor. So the whole spiel of taking iron levels are great, stopping to take iron, half a year later they're low again, went on for about three years. Yes, three years. And I just kept on believing the doctor this is completely normal, which probably is completely normal for some women, right? True. However, I would say then you initiated and I joined in doing a little bit more research. Not that, again, very important, we are not doctors. This is purely based on gen specific case. And also doing your own research online doesn't mean you should trust it. We just took that research, presented it to the doctor and asked for the opinion in all these cases. Just were a little bit more insistent. Yeah, so I said, doctor, I see that these could be potential causes for a more prolonged iron uh, deficiency. Could we check them up? And she's like, yeah, okay, we can, we can do this. And she's like, this I don't believe is the case because otherwise this and this would other happen. And then we eliminated some. And coincidentally enough, that same day, in that morning, I had felt a ball on my abdomen, but like a ball, like it was like a, I had swallowed a ping pong you could feel and it was it. there. Exactly, yes. And so I also asked the doctor, can you also check this? Because this is weird. <laughs> and she's like, uh, you're not pregnant, right? And I'm like, no, I'm not pregnant because it feels like if you have a three month fetus in your uterus. So I was like, okay, <laughs> okay that's weird. Um, unfortunately, this house arts didn't have an ultrasound machine and she recommended that I go to the gynecologist to get an ultrasound. Now, I said I went to the gynecologist before, right? However, this is when we learned, I mean, I knew it, I was just not aware about it, that with public health insurance, the yearly checkup that you get when you go to the gynecologist is a breast exam um, and pretty much a swap from your um, cervix uh, to test that there is no cancer. Um, when I was privately insured as a teenager, I also always got an ultrasound, but then that just didn't happen anymore and I never questioned it. Yeah, so, be, so when I went to the gynecologist, there was no ultrasound. So when I went to the gynecologist this time and asked for an ultrasound, hold and behold, here were the results. As it turns out, this pink ball, did I say pink ball or golf ball? <laughs> I think golf ball <laughs> was actually what is called a fibroid. So according to the Google definition of fibroid is a growth or pretty much benign tumors or benign meatballs as, as we call them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're pretty much just flesh that just grows in your uterus. And this can cause certain things to happen. One of them being a very strong period. So the gynecologist asked me, do you have a strong period? And I was like, I don't know. Do you Define have a strong, strong. period? <laughs> Define strong, I don't know. So here are a few questions that the gynecologist asked me. First of all, how long is your period for? And I was like, seven days. 
And then when I went home, I'm like, Yvonne, how strong is your period? How long is your period for? Usually around five days. Okay. And then the gynecologist proceeded to ask me, and out of those seven days, how many days is strong blood? And I was like, three days? For me, it's usually one day. Okay. And then uh, out of those three days, how often, first of all, what size of tampon do you use? If you use tampon or how often do you change your, your, your female product hygienic thing? And I was like, well, I use tampons and that is uh, the strong, the biggest one. And every two to three hours. So I also use the biggest one on my strong, one strong day. And there I probably change also like every four hours. And then he's like, dude, well, he didn't say dude, but he was like, uh, you do have a very strong period. And the interesting part is, and also one of the reasons that motivated us to do this video is because no one talks about woman health. I mean, look at it here, are two women living together, both having their periods. We are fully aware of it. We talk about having our periods, but we never really went into the detail of saying like, who, how strong is your blood flow? Or like, we just say, oh, this is a strong day, but we don't really, I mean, we could have easily figured out that Jen's is stronger than mine, but we didn't because we weren't even on that awareness level. Yeah. So that's, again, we don't talk about it. And more importantly, it's okay if we don't talk about it with friends and others, but we don't also determine it with our gynecologist to determine how strong is my period in a way, mm. right? Which is also super crazy. So the outcome was that the gynecologist, A, gave me the diagnosis that I have a very strong period and most likely it was the fibros, fibroids causing these strong periods. Fibroids, by the way, in German are myomas, is what I learned. Maybe there's different names for it as well. Um, and the, he suggested either A, I can take hormones to reduce the amount of blood flow that I would have during my, my period, or have my fibros right. removed. Which still wouldn't remove the ball. Yeah, which so. still wouldn't remove the ball, right? And have the fi or have the fibros removed. So I went with the second option because my goal at the end of the day was to stop taking iron and to kind of like fix my iron, uh, how do you say this, uh, Level. levels and, and reserves. <laughs> um, so I went with the taking out the fibroids. So then I scheduled that surgery for, I think it was summer 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, mind you, it was a very hot summer. There was no AC in the hospital. So it was a very interesting recovery time. Um, and, uh, the surgery was performed laparoscopic, laparoscopically, yes, <laughs> which means it's not uh, like, um, a belly cut, like for example, for the C-section, but it is a, mi a minimally invasive surgery where you, where the doctors, the surgeons um, use tools that go through your belly button and two other small incisions and operate with a camera. Yes. And one of those tools is to pump gas into your belly to, for the camera to see better. And the other one is like a little plier that they have to cut things out. One thing I didn't mention is that in the ultrasound, there were actually three fibroids discovered. The ping pong ball, well, golf. <laughs> golf ball that I mentioned, and two others uh, around it, right? After the surgery, after waking up, the surgeon came and looked at me like, whoa, good that you came for the surgery because we found 13 fibroids and they were all hiding like behind this, I want to always say ping pong ball, golf ball. <laughs> And I was shocked. I was like, 13? And he's like, yeah, good that you came. And, and I was like, doctor, thank you so much. I hope, don't take this the wrong way, but I hope I never have to see you again. <laughs> um, and that was 2020. And I left very happily from the hospital. Recovery was a bit tough, I would say. Um, and I still didn't feel like, I, I felt okay, I would say. Um, time went by and I went again to the doctor to check my iron. It's like the spiel that I have in my life, right? <laughs> And hold and behold, the iron levels were low again. And I was like, how can this be? So obviously the natural conclusion is going back to the gynecologist. I mean, I do have a gynecologist appointment every year to check things. And this was like in the middle of the year or somewhat. Um, so it was before the checkup. And so hold and behold, the ultrasound came back again with fibroids. So they regrew. So this was 2021. Which is a, which can happen. And already before the first surgery, it told us, look, this, it could be that they regrow. And some women, they do regrow and some they don't. Yes. So this timeline wise, this was in, let's say, early 2021, mm -hmm. kind of, when we found out the fibroids were back. And it seems like I have a fibroid actually factory in my uterus because they just keep on coming back, right? Which is crazy. So again, the doctor recommended either hormones, but this time instead of taking the fibroids out was to take the uterus out. And I was like, the what, sorry? <laughs> it's like the uterus. The surgery the gynecologist recommended is called LASH, which Ivan is going to read the equivalent or what it means in German. So LASH stands for laparoscopische supracervicale hysterectomy. Wow. Hysterectomy here, I think, it's is the, the keyword. Word. Yes. Yeah. And the other just means it's again the laparoscopy, so no belly cut. 
Yeah, so I was like, I, to be honest, I was like, what? I feel so weird at the time hearing him talking about having another surgery, first of all, and second of all, to take an organ from my body. Yeah. And he's super downplayed. He's like, oh, this is like completely normal. This is like a normal procedure. Don't worry about it. You will feel so much better it's to improve your quality of life. And that's at the end of the day, the goal, right? Um, so when can we book it? No, he didn't say, so you should go to the surgeon to book it as soon as you can. To be very honest, I left that conversation and office feeling a little bit like, uneasy. what? Yeah. Uneasy. I was shocked and I told Devon, look, like he's recommended that I take my uterus out. And I'm like, what? And we talked about it and it just felt super weird, right? So we pushed it. So to be honest, we pushed it. I was very scared of it, I have to also confess. Um, and throughout that year, I took iron every single day. So no longer in this like intervals of six months on, three months off or whatever, but literally every single day. And the interesting thing is that shortly or close to a year after taking iron every single day, my body started feeling weird. This is again, my personal experience. I'm by no far, this is like a medical thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know, I, some days I would randomly, if we have to be honest, I would randomly have like diarrhea. Um, other days I would feel like sick or I would have stomach pain. And I contributed this to iron because I was taking absolutely nothing else and my lifestyle was the and same. And the side right? effects of iron are exactly those, um, those possibilities. Yeah. So I said, it can't be that because I'm scared of something. I'm like shying away from the information or at least gaining all the information I could. So we went into research mode with Yvonne and then we're like, okay, let's figure as much as information as we can about this whole situation. And we found something actually very shocking. So the doctor wasn't downplaying the whole lash um, treatment at all in the sense of, oh, it's super common and no biggie or whatever. I mean, it is still a big surgery. Mm -hmm. However, it is true that it's actually totally common. And this is, again, another motivation why Jen said, I want to talk about this. Um, and I said, okay, let's do it. Um, because this is after surgeries involved in giving birth and surgeries on intestines, this is the third most performed surgeries on women in Germany with around about 130 to 150,000 times a year. Wow. So this is really quite common. Mm -hmm. And also the whole fact of myomas or fibroids in, 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 in the uterus of women, every fifth woman has myomas or fibroids. Not everyone has symptoms, just like Jen did with the low iron. So that means not all of them need to get treatment, but it is rather common and it's not really talked about. Yes, I agree. And also part of the research was watching YouTube videos of women talking about their experience having a hysterectomy. And to be honest, like the results were not like a thousand things, right? Like there were a few selected videos and they were all from people from the US and no one else talked I about it. I found one in German from, ah, a, yeah. from, a, from a, actually an actress in Fair Germany, point. which was um, very encouraging. Yeah. So I, that is very true, we found that one. And additional to that, um, a Mexican's friend's mom was visiting and she she's retired now, but she was a doctor and she also had a hysterectomy performed and she was also super encouraging. She also explained that uh, a uterus next to giving birth or growing children, it's also prone to growing tumors. And I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, you should totally do it. Like, you know, I feel great after doing it. And she was very encouraging. So I was like, okay, I have all the information that I need. I think it's time to tackle this problem. But before I did that, I had one more thing on my list and that was to get a second opinion. You know, I wasn't just gonna jump into, into the hysterectomy train just yet. So I went to another gynecologist and she explained the same thing. She came to the same conclusion and she was very kind and explaining different also options. But at the end of the day, she said, if you want to improve your quality of life and if you don't wanna have children in the long run, which we don't, then we recommend, I also recommend doing a lash. And I was like, okay, okay I have two doctors confirming, like, the world seems to agree, so let's pursue with this. So with that information, I went again to the same hospital where I had my first surgery and saw again the surgeon who I told to his face, I hope I don't see you again. <laughs> Two years later, I am there again. And he was also, again, the surgeons usually do another examination and he also did other examinations and agreed as well. Lash was the way, so there were three people talking. And, and he confirming. also said like, oh, at the moment I have like lashes almost every day. I mean, wow. that's not true. He has two days a week where he operates, but those days were full with lashes. So wow. that again is like, okay, this is actually not as uncommon as one might think. Now we have to clarify that there's ty different types of hysterectomies. So lash is like the procedure that they do, but during that procedure, they can take different organs from your um, feminine uh, reproductive system. In my case, the organs that were gonna be take out, taken out was just the uterus and the fallopian tubes. In other cases, they might also take the ovaries and the cervix. So in Jen's case, that meant that she would keep all of her hormones, she would not go into menopause, and also the cervix is super important to keep the pelvic floor intact so that the other organs 
will kind of like also stay in place. Whereas if you would take out the cervix, there is a chance for prolapse. And if you would take out the ovaries, you would pretty much be sent straight into menopause, which of course was to be avoided at all costs if that's possible. So I scheduled my surgery for November 2022. And to be very honest, I was very nervous about this surgery. A, because I already knew what similar surgery implied, because it was going to be the same procedure as last surgery, just they were going to take different things <laughs> out, uh, but it was exactly the same thing. And again, I had this uneasiness of, oh, wow, they're taking a uterus, you know, they're taking kind of like what, I don't know if it makes you a woman or well, not, it's but an it's organ. part of your yeah. femininity as, as well, yeah. right? Anyways, the day arrived and I went into surgery and everything went fine. Second time around, anesthesia hit me a little bit harder, um, but it was just for a few hours. And then I must say recovery was pretty good. And how do I feel now? I must say, I don't know if it's a mental thing or what, but I just feel so energized. I feel like I recovered a lot quicker than my first surgery, but you were there for both surgeries. So. It was, it was honestly, it was crazy. I mean, this time around, I was able to visit uh, Jen in the hospital. The first time in 2020 when COVID was still a bit fresh, I was not allowed to mm -hmm. visit, but purely also the difference on camera, um, the pictures that I took of you, mm -hmm. everyone that knows you better, my family, friends is like, wow, there was just this I mean, Jen, you know Jen a little bit from the videos. It's a very energetic, positive person in general. But the level of energy was just like increased by, I don't know how much, um, the second day after the surgery, after the anesthesia wore off. And it was instant energy. There was instant movement way more than the first time around. Hmm. And I would say it's probably a mix of both. It's a mix of your body feeling maybe healthier, but most importantly, also your mind feeling healthier and maybe being rid of the thing that caused you trouble for so long and kind of like being lifted. I totally agree. Um, I feel great. And I think it was one of the best decisions I've ever done for my medical health. Because I I don't know how to describe it. It's just something changed. I, I, I feel it, but I don't know how to point, put a pin on it, you know? Um, additional to that, one of the other benefits, I hope, is that when you have such a surgery uh, like mine, there's 90% chance that I won't have my period again and a 10% chance that I will. So far, I'm in the 90% bucket and I hope it remains that way, um, just because it's nice, it's, right? It's a nice side effect. No? Yeah. <laughs> so again, one of the reasons why we're making this video is A, because no one talks about this and we're being so open and personal with you is to encourage you that if you are a woman living in Germany and you've never been checked by a gynecologist before, or ever and you are of age or are sexually active then maybe it's the time just consider it there is a very nice public health system that is there for you and i would say in my experience gynecologists have been super kind super nice nothing weird has happened and of course you always have google reviews or in dr live to see reviews of people before you actually go there um, or you can get recommendations from friends or other co-workers but most importantly also depending on what culture you come from you might it might not be the most common thing to think about in germany it's perfectly accepted by society is the most normal thing to go for preventative checkups every year and no one will look at you sideways think like mm. oh what have you been up to that you go to the gynecologist mm. on the contrary it's like ah good that you're taking care of your health yes that is true to give some perspective on that like i asked some guatemalan friends and they agree with two things number one in a country like where i come from guatemala medicine is looked more as a reactive thing you only go if you're absolutely almost dying or if something super absolutely bad is wrong with you However, in Germany, it's more of a preventative thing and it's totally fine to do it. But again, you have an ecosystem that allows you to do that. Also, yeah. And second of all, going to your point, also in Guatemala, if you're quite young, some either like people in the university, some, some girls, they go hiding from their parents to the gynecologist, even if they're already 24 or five sexually active as well, just because it's taboo and that's not a thing that you talk about. So again, this video hopefully encourages you to consider other options again, because you never know, right? Checking your health is one of the most important things because at the end of the day, we all want to be healthy, right? And in Germany, you have the possibility to achieve that. We hope this information will help you take control of your health in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. Now, if you're curious on how to handle sick days and doctors, doctors visits and everything in Germany, then make sure to click on the video that's here on the left. Until next time. Tschüss. Tschüss.